you've kicked off your health coaching practice and now you're wondering what's next. How can you attract clients that best match your niche? How can you grow your business with your goals and authenticity in mind? We're so excited to have Christine Hansen, founder of Christine Mint's Business, lead this session on tactical next steps you can take to scale your business. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this masterclass where we're going to go through all the essential steps of how to start a business or how to grow a beautiful health coaching business that you will love for years and years and years to come. So I've been in this business for nearly a decade. Um, my first company sleep or my second company actually sleep like a boss was a business selling sleep which you know initially you think it's going to be so easy but as you will figure out selling health anything about health has to be done in a very very certain way so I will teach you things a little bit differently or share experiences in a way that might be a little bit different than what you've seen pretty much anywhere else um, so I'm excited to get into it. I'm really encouraging you to engage. I'm going to look at the chat from time to time, uh, but I'm encouraging you, I'm probably going to answer all of your questions at the end um, when we're done so that I can really answer everything in detail. So I'm really, really excited and I'm going to quickly share my screen. I will have slides, but I will tell you straight from the bat that I will switch over quite a bit to engage with you as well, because we really do not want to have death by PowerPoint. So let me quickly share my screen with you and to make sure that you see my pretty face. There we go. How to start and grow an online business. And we are going to take a look at five main pillars today. Um, that I really distilled my brand on after being in this business for such a long time and that I implement differently, but also with the same principles each time I work with my clients. So the first thing we're going to cover today is what is a brand? What is a niche? Do you need both? And also, how can you do it in a way that is stepping a little bit away from the traditional, but in a way that is going to serve you for years and years and decades and eons to come. We're going to look at hardcore figures in terms of pricing and packaging. There is a lot we need to talk about there. We're really also going to go into the nitty gritty of email, streamlining all your tech, because you know, even though we have certifications and everything in health, running a business, can become technical. So I'm going to let you know what you need exactly. We're also going to look at content flow. What exactly is content? How can you be the most efficient and what do you need? So there's going to be, it's basically going to be a checklist. You will see it on the screen afterwards. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what I find is the most important. And then finally, and this one I changed a little bit because this used to be um, PR. But honestly, PR has changed so much ever since I started this game in 2015 that I've stepped away from it a little bit because I don't want to share outdated advice. So I'm going to give you the best of what I have, but just making really, really, really clear that, you know, some things have changed and I'm going to comment global outreach in a way that is a little bit more based on collaborations. So let's get started with our very first philosophy point. And basically, I like to refer to this as actually seeding. So I'm going to go back and show you this checklist. And when you see it, don't be too overwhelmed. There's a lot of different stuff on there, but I'm going to go through each one of these elements. Now, before I do that, though, I really, really want to start with expectations, because this is something that I see happening over and over again. And it's that when you, specifically when you start a business, you do a lot of work up front. And that is why I specifically call this section seeding, because it's actually not really getting you clients yet. It's just birthing your company. And so the next slide is going to show you a checklist with all the things that will belong to that. But in all realistic expectations, even with help, this is probably going to take you three months or something like that. And you will most likely feel exhausted by the end of it because let truth be told, 
it's not something that we're native to, right? So as an entrepreneur, you have to wear all of these different hats. You have to know your expertise, which is health coaching. Then you need to know, you know, your finances, how to run a business. Then suddenly you have to become a digital native. There's a lot that goes to it. So this is not to discourage you, but I do find that in the online space, sometimes expectations are just not sold in a very realistic way so I might not have the most popular way of expressing this but it's the most honest one I feel which is really that you have to be aware that any success is built on momentum and momentum happens in increments and increments have to start small it's just it's it's physics it's not doable differently now you can of course collapse time a little bit as you work with experts, maybe also as you have a bigger budget and get things done. But in the end, it still takes a little bit of time. So let's start and have a look at what I mean by seeding. What are the different elements that you should have on your to-do list um, or that you want to might want to look over? Now, just me move my bar here just a little bit to have everything a little bit better under control. All right. So seeding means that you want to get your business ready in terms of online visibility. And the first thing you want to think about is your domain. Um, your domain is simple, like it's like your address that you have right now, wherever you live. So it's, you know, mine is here in Luxembourg. So it's 12B Rue Jean-Baptiste Noyens in Merche. <laughs> Not that that means anything to anyone. But that's where I live. That would be your home. So with Sleep Like a Boss, it's sleeplikeaboss.com. With my coaching business, it's christinemeansbusiness.com. So, and here, just a word of advice Unless you are really, really, really clear that you want to work in your one niche, in one, your one domain forever, it might not be the best idea to choose a word or a description of what you do. So let me say this. So Sleep Like a Boss works well because we focus on sleep and we knew that this company is always going to be about that. However... It could also, when I started out, I could have dabbled with something like christinehansen.com, which wasn't available, by the way, but, you know, anything with my name or .net or something like that. So it's really important that you ponder that for a little bit and that you're really certain who you want to work or what area you want to work with. So it's really, do you think that maybe you want to expand, then your name might be the right solution in terms of that you are an umbrella company or is a certain part of health going to be the focus? So the domain name is something you should be choosing wisely because that's what people will be typing in to find you then next is the host which is basically if you look at internet land you register your address now you need a plot of land to build your house so to say that would be the host that is going to provide that for you there's loads of different ones i had really good experience with hostgator or with SiteGround. Um, but there's also GoDaddy is a famous one, but I know that they have had very, very, or well, I know a lot of people that had terrible experiences, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend them in the first place, but have a good look, ask other people, what were your experiences? And you have Block Friday coming up. Any sales day is usually a good time to register and to see what they have to offer. Make very, be very certain that there's a great customer service too. Then when you have your plot of land, you need to build your website. And so there's different ways that you can do this. You can either use something, an all-in-one solution like Squarespace or Wix, where you can register all these things in one, or you can go with something like WordPress, careful wordpress.com and wordpress.org are not the same thing wordpress.com is a blogging platform wordpress.org is a building possibility um it really depends on what you want to do and how comfortable you feel online i do prefer wordpress because it allows you to customize a lot more than with squarespace or wix necessarily so if you are in the beginning and if you always want to keep things super simple, then that might be a great solution. If you want to become a little bit more sophisticated with your businesses, add different options, then I would really, really recommend to go with WordPress. And then you need a builder that is going to allow you to drag and drop and build your site. So 
Examples would be Elementor is very famous, Divi is famous, or Thrive Themes. Those are all things that you can check out and that are very, very user friendly. And you have tons of YouTube tutorials that will teach you um, on how to do that, for example. Right. So these are all things that still belong to our seeding um, phase. Next, when you have people coming to your website, you do want to draw them in through a lead magnet and then you have the following things that belong to that as well which is an email software provider and then you need to let people know about it now before we start a little bit about what a lead magnet is and what you should choose i want to talk to you about the very first pillar which is branding and niching and you should even think about that before you start building any website so branding can be described as just your colors that you're going to use over and over. So if you look at your coach, their colors are like green and this dark blue, or um, it can also be your font. So you will recognize it straight away. It's similar to, you know, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, you know exactly, you know, the orange of Hermes is very, very distinctive. Their font is very distinctive. McDonald's has a very, very distinctive brand. That's one part. The other part, though, that I find is much more important is that people need to know immediately who you are and what you stand for. And traditionally, when we talk about brand, the advice is that you have a voice or that you communicate in a way that the person that you think is your great, ideal, bestest client in the world will respond to it. Here is where I have a huge problem with that. We assume things that are not necessarily true. And I see it over and over. So if you take the traditional exercise of, I want to work only with women, moms in their 30s, because they're all really stressed and you know they have mom guilt or they want to have their sexy body again. I don't know, whatever you do. Um, and maybe they all have to be corporate because that's where the money is. You are riding on a wave of a lot of assumptions and very often they can be very wrong. Now, the truth is that on the one hand, you can go that way and then you can gather clients and you can then figure out if you were right. But I can tell you from experience that a lot of people suddenly discover that actually they don't actually like the people they are attracting that way. Or what I would really recommend is that you do not care about any assumptions, specifically about who you think will be able to afford you. Because people, are very, you have no idea who has money and who spends money. Those are two very different things. You don't know who just had a huge inheritance. You don't know who has a trust fund. You don't know who did you know, great investments and has now real estate working for them, even if their job might not be very glamorous, you have no idea. So my formula is really that you should always start with yourself and people are, that is very egocentric. It's very selfish, but trust me, start with the formal following for me, then for you, and then for us. The most important thing is that you know what you like, what you stand for, and who you are, which is not the easiest thing to do in the world. And any entrepreneur will tell you that entrepreneurship is the biggest journey of self-discovery and it's never ending. And it takes a lot of courage as well, because sometimes you need to polarize a bit and say, you know, actually everyone says this, but I actually don't think so. But the good thing that will then happen is that people know immediately what you're about. And in the, in, on the internet, where you have so many choices, people don't have time to investigate. They will, if they want to, they will do that still. But a lot of them who don't know exactly what you're about, who you are, especially in health, where it's not just about your certification, but a lot about you, because you have to build that space for them. It's very personal. People want to know what your vibe is, what your, what your opinions are, what your values are. And I don't want you to worry about finding clients. It might sound counterintuitive, but you have clients. There's so many tons the internet is full of them but you cannot and should never want to convince anyone to work with you 
you are there, you are who you are, and you are ready to help those who want to be helped. I love the metaphor of the lighthouse. It's an author called Anne Lamott, and she says that the lighthouse does not budge. You know, you have lots of lifeboats out looking for help. They see the lighthouse. It's their choice whether they want to go towards that life, that lighthouse that's seeing to be rescued or not. The lighthouse is not suddenly hobbling towards the beach. That's not how it happens. And in your business, it shouldn't either. So really stand your ground. You are there. You're ready to help for those who get you, who will absolutely be a dream to work with rather than painting yourself all different colors and shining in disco lights when actually you're totally mellow, you know, just to, to you know, build on this metaphor a little bit. Um, that I think is the most, most important step. Then when you have people coming to check you out and your website, your copy, which is the text on your website should really reflect that. It should not just be about smarts, about persuasion. It should really be about you, how you would speak, how you would communicate. And being honest, you know, I've rewritten my website 5 million times because I have changed a lot and I will change it again and again. Now you will rarely see me talking about six or seven figures because I'm over it. You know, it's just not what I do anymore, but I used to. And it's what a lot of people do and a lot of people say you should be doing. So you have to be it takes some courage, but I'm really advising you that that is one of the most important points when it comes to branding and to who you are and to start building that business right from the get-go. So then when we have people coming to your website, what you want to do is that you will want to get them onto your email list. And the difference between email list and social media, for example, followers, is that the email list belongs to you. I lost an Instagram account of 12,000 followers. So I had to start from scratch, but my email list is mine and has been for years. So that's when we talk about a lead magnet, in other words, an opt-in, a freebie. And it's basically that people don't just hand out their email addresses anymore because we have so much in our inbox that we are quite selective now when we give our email. And very often we have like a trashy email, you know, the email that you sign up for to get the get discounts and all of that stuff. And fair enough, there's not much we can do about that. But even getting that demands a little bit of a gift. So you want to give a free sample, which psychologically doesn't exist, um, I don't know if you know the book Influencer by Robert Cialdini. He's great. He has the whole psychology about it that people, you know, can have to reciprocate if you give them something. So that's what this is built on. You give them something, you give them, you show them who you are, you help them. And in exchange, they will give you an email address. It's a transaction. Now, after that, you will need to connect that with your email service provider and then the schmoozing gets started. You basically want to introduce yourself and you want them to get to know you and your product. So email service providers are, for example, MailChimp, which personally I would be careful about because in the beginning they're great, but as they become bigger and more sophisticated, it's a nightmare and very expensive. So other options could be MailerLite, which is free up to a thousand subscribers or Flowdesk, which has a fixed price, no matter how many members you have. Active campaign, the campaign convert kits. Those are all things that I know that my clients have been quite happy with. Now, another thing that I want to talk to about, because I mentioned it in the beginning, which is pricing before we start on, on growing, is pricing and packaging. And I have a whole masterclass here with your coach. And I'm certain that we can find it um, on the Your Coach website somewhere where we go through all the nitty gritty. But here is something that you need to be really clear about. So there's two parts that I recommend everyone doing when they start thinking about pricing and packaging. Number one is that you actually need to know your very realistic, no nonsense, no judgment baseline of the money you actually need to make each month. So how do you figure that out? You have to basically look at all the bills, all the online transactions, everything in your bank statement that you did over the last year. So right now, December is coming up. It's actually a good time or even to look at last year's 
and really plow through each and one of them and write it out. And then including obviously birthday gifts, vacations, um, uh, Christmas gifts, even, even or Hanukkah gifts or when, whatever you, you celebrate, every little thing has to be on there so that you know the amount for the year. And then you can divide that up by 12 so that you know what you have to make in a month. And then you add your business expenses too. So all your softwares, your VA, all of those things, your certifications, if that is a renewal fee, all of that has to be added. And then you know what you need to make a month. Why am I saying this? Why is this so important? Well, basically, if you go down the route of comparing yourself, you have no idea how these other people came up with their pricing. You don't know if they live somewhere in the sticks where they have a tiny rent or no rent or no mortgage, or whether you have someone who lives in a huge city where, you know, real estate prices, because let's face it, that's our biggest chunk of money that usually goes out, is really expensive. You don't know about their living costs. You don't know if they need to save up for a college fund for their kids. You have no clue. And it makes a huge difference knowing how much money you need to make on your own, not with a partner. I always want you to go from the premise that it's just you making money for the business. You never know what happens because then it shifts. Your whole mindset shifts into your business is actually a business. It's not just me helping people. I actually have to help myself. I need to survive. I need to bring food on the table. If anything happens, I need to be absolutely certain that this business can support me and those around me or whatever I care about or my lifestyle, you know? So having that very objective number is going to make it very easy for you to also charge a certain moment. And when people say it's too expensive, it's just like, I'm sorry, but I have to pay my bills. This is the amount that I need to bring in. And from there, you can then create packages. And my rule of thumb is that you should always have a VIP option that will pay for a whole month. So for example, my VIP day for coaching, which is six hours and then three months of follow-up support is 7,000. Half a VIP day is 3,500. That covers me, no luxuries, like the, the full VIP day, which means that my other packages might look smaller. You know, they are then half so that I need maybe two or three clients a month in order to make sure that I cover all my bills. However, I also have other income streams, but in the beginning, this is really what I suggest, knowing how many clients you need. And also if you renew them on several months, what is the absolute maximum that you can take? I never work with more than six people at a time because that is already me being you know, available quite a bit, making sure that I have space for all of them. And so it's important that you know in advance how many new clients you can sign up when. So that is really the formula that I usually use. And as I said, we have a whole workshop on that here with your health coach that you can check out. So that is really one way of knowing what you charge. That way you can also speak that way on your website. Be very transparent because you don't want to waste anyone's time. Because it's not just, and that's really important. A lot of people talk to me about, you know, um, I don't want to waste time having people call me. And then when I say my price, they are, you know, really shocked or they are even insulted that it's so expensive. And that's totally cool. It's nothing personal. You know, we each have different layers. But what's important that you understand is that it's not just your waste of time, but it's also theirs. So I'm very transparent with my prices and so should you. Now, one of the biggest obstacles that you're going to face is not actually your skill, but it's your mindset. It's actually you speaking about speaking or hearing voices of yourself or of other people telling you why, how can you even afford that or afford to charge that much? You haven't been in the business that long. So before we move on very quickly to help you, one thing that you can always remember is that people pay you to collapse time. People can get everything on the internet for free. I'm not kidding. They can get pretty much everything, like not physical products, but in terms of knowledge. You have YouTube videos, you have Pinterest boards, you have blog posts, you have online magazines, you have online journal, everything is available. 
if they want it for free, it's fine. But what they will exchange it for is their time Googling and searching and then reading and filtering out the information that makes sense and that is useful to them. That time can be used on other things. It could be used with your family. It could be used for travel. It could be used to work more. It could be used for whatever you want to, but they will use it on a search that they wouldn't have to do if they worked with you because you have everything in this amazing thing between our ears, which is your brain. You took the certification, you did the research. So what they pay for is time that is collapsed. That's the thing you need to always remember. Ask yourself, how long would it take this person to figure all of this out from scratch? How long does it take them when they work with me, when they ask me the question? Even if I don't know the immediate answer, I know exactly who to ask or where to look. Time has collapsed and time is the only thing in this world that we cannot get back. So that is how you can sometimes boost your morale. I have more tips where those are coming from, but I think for now, this is one of the most important ones. So let's get back to the program. So we talked about having getting people on your email list. Now, here's the other thing that I see a lot of time happening. You have a great lead magnet, but people are not coming and signing up. And the reason is that until now, setting up your website, becoming clear on your brand, picking your prices and packaging, or, you know, strategizing on them, setting up your email funnel, all of these things. None of that is client acquisition. None of that means that anyone knows who you are and that you exist. And that's the crux. That's really the most important moment because that's when a lot of people get discouraged. They have done a lot of work. Everything is beautiful, beautiful. It took a lot of energy and nobody knows, <laughs> you know, nobody's signing up. And that's simply because it does take a certain amount of people to know about you. It's just the way it goes. So how do we get to tell people about our beautiful things? So one of the main ones is obviously social media platforms, whether that is all of them or whether it's just one of them that you want to focus on. I recommend maybe two, maybe three. I'm not on, I'm present on a lot of them, but I really only focus on two, which to me is Instagram and Facebook, but it could also be LinkedIn. It could be Pinterest. Pinterest is awesome for long-term content. I will talk more about that. Twitter, whatever, TikTok, whatever rocks your boat. It really doesn't matter, but you need to feel comfortable with it. So you need to be sharing that, but even sharing on social media is not going to be enough. So let's continue from seeding to growing. So growing means that we really want to um, get the word out about ourselves. We want to get Google on our side because Google, if Google is your friend, it's going to share you with its people, which is pretty much everyone in this world who types something into the Google search engine. Now, however, Google is not a one night stand. Google wants to be wined and dined consistently for at least six months. So you will need to do so, not by, you know, paying it, it's very difficult, even with an ad spend, but by feeding it content, by proving that you are worth being shared with the world. And you do that by producing content that first of all is good, but also that is all over the internet. So how do you do that? And I'm going to walk you through the way that I produce my content because I have a flow that actually allows me to spend 40 minutes and create two months of content for that. So here's an example of what that could look like. It always depends on who you and your preferences, of course. Just bear with me, it will make sense. So the way that I do it, and this is my example, is that I do one video because I hate writing. Even my newsletter is going to be, as of 1st of December, it's going to be audio only. I don't like it. It's not my medium. So I prefer just speaking and showing up in front of the camera. So for me, I start with a video for YouTube. I don't script it. I just talk. I have some bullet points and that's it. But again, if you prefer a trailer prompter or anything like that, that's absolutely up to you. The point is I get it done. After that, I extract the audio for my podcast. So actually I'm doing interviews quite a bit because I have fun doing that. I meet interesting people. So we put that on YouTube, which is the second most popular search engine. And then we use the audio for podcasts. So um, a platform I use is anchor.fm, which is free. And it just extracts the audio from it and boom, you are on Apple and Spotify and so forth. 
then I give it to a freelancer to take notes, but you could also get it transcribed. There are lots of artificial intelligence transcriptions platforms that are free, actually. Otter.ai is free up to 40 minutes. Um, I have a freelancer who listens to it and then just takes notes. Um, then you can create a graphic for Pinterest. Pinterest is search engine number three. You have a lot of people looking for that and finding, you know, um, people and service providers and health coaches through Pinterest. You can then use snippets for social media or for your stories. You can take different snippets for different ones, or you can just say, hey, I have a new blog post out. I have a new freebie out. And then the difference though is that social media should be rather short educational. It shouldn't be too long versus um, the blog posts, which should really show your knowledge. So we have a difference between long form content and short form content. So long form content is Google orientated, which is meaty. It shows your expertise. The design is that people find you through your long-term content, and then they go to social media to to stalk you, you know, to find out more about who you are, what your values are about, and if they like you, basically, or if you're funny or if you're serious or whatever they're looking for, right? So long form content, important for Google to find you. And then when people come to your blog, you will then offer your freebie, you know, your lead magnet so that people get on your email list so that you can actually tend to them a little bit longer. Some people will never be on your email list. They will just fall in love with you straight away and, you know, inquire how to work with you. Social media is a little bit different. Social media is more snippets into your private life. And it's really important. Like, I don't want you to overshare, but it is important that people who see your social media know what you are about. And also just as importantly, what you are not about, things that you don't like, things that you, things that you stand against, you know, it, it's just, it has to be a quite an honest place. You can share educational snippets, educational reels work very well. Um, sometimes in educational posts. And then of course, you know, promote. Not saying that you should, every post should be a promotional post, but every fifth post or so should be promoting something or you and your expertise. That can also look like you being a guest somewhere, you having written an article somewhere, but it should always remind people that you do have a business because in the end, that's what you do. And don't be worried about pissing people off. People are very aware that you have to make a living and that you are there to sell something. Like, don't kid anyone, people know. All right, so once we have our lead magnet out there, once we have people coming in, it's, start to, it's time to grow. So we have seeded, we started to, oh, sorry, started to grow. And now it's time to really, really blossom. What I mean by blossoming is to really make sure that you are maintaining that momentum of your business. So you remember I talked about small increments. This is how your in increments gets bigger and bigger. One task is email list building. So getting people to your list. And I just explained a little bit how that works, but make sure that each week when you sit down, you just have that question, what am I focusing on this week? Or at least this month, what do I want to focus on? And how am I going to do that? And write down three to four steps. Newsletters, it's a horrible word. We don't even call it that way anymore. I think very often you call it columns or I, I call it my audio love notes. Um, it doesn't, or my gazette, whatever you want to call it or updates. But what it basically is, it, it reminds people that you are there. And if they have already given you their email address, they are quite open to learn about what you offer and how they can work with you. And if they're not, then they will unsubscribe. And that is totally cool because again, you don't want to change, uh, chase anyone and they would most likely never work with you anyway. So it's totally fine to give people the opportunity to check you out. And if they decide you're not their cup of tea, it's not personal at all all you do the same we all do it so i know for some people they feel really horrible when they do an unsubscribe <laughs> i love it i'm religiously purging my inbox all the time and again it's not personal it's just i don't need this right now if i ever need it again i will resubscribe or you know this person was not quite for me which is also why i like collaborations because someone else might just be perfect so there's no competition it's really everyone has the right person out there 
but email newsletters are great to stay in touch. And also I would really recommend to do them regularly so that it's not just promotional. So people are, you know, getting in touch, they get to know you better, they learn from you. And when you then offer something, it's not quite, oh, whenever I get an email, it's to sell me something, you know, it's just a little bit smoother, I feel. Masterclasses like this one are great in the beginning, specifically to uh, offer them even for free so that people can really get to know what you're about, what your method is, what your creed is, what your knowledge is, how your approach is maybe different from others. And in the beginning, I really, you know, like doing them for free and then I record them and I have them in my vault where I can monetize them later on if I wish to do so. Or you could just leave them and use them as a freebie or as a bonus at a later time. So it's never a waste of time. Um, and I find they are a great way to get people to know more about you and how you can promote it and all of that. There's tons of different ways that that um, I teach as well. Then I really recommend that at the beginning of each quarter, you have a promotion and an offer plan, which means that you know what you're going to focus on. And that way creating content is much easier too, because you will know that it's aligned with that. So I do it each quarter. It's the easiest for me. So three months in advance, I can plan. I don't tend to plan a lot longer than that. Um, sometimes I plan my year with milestones, just with big projects. I did it specifically in 2019 for 2020. That went well. And I'm actually talking more about that in my book. I will talk, I will explain a little bit later what that is about. But quarterly, I find is the absolute minimum that really helps you to stay focused as well. A post idea organization is something that you can also do. If you're someone who has a really hard time posting, you can plan them, you can batch them out and use a system as a software to then post them automatically. I'm more someone who does it organically. I really just post when I really have something to say or when I'm very clear rather than just asking pizza or pasta, you know, that's not my vibe, but it's up to you to each their own. I just really find that sometimes less is more in terms of still do show up like three times a week, I would say is the bare minimum, but make sure that it's not just wasting people's time, which is a bit harsh, but well, then video production is something that's important. People connect with you the quickest when it's over the video because they can hear you, they can see you. Micro movements in your face, it's just incredibly powerful. So don't underestimate it. It's really, really quick. So I really suggest that you look into it. It doesn't have to be super professional, but in the meantime, having a great iPhone, just got the new iPhone 13. It's phenomenal. Um, you're ready to go. And then the last one that I really, really cannot stress enough is collaborations. Collaborations can be anything from doing an Insta Live on somebody else's Instagram. It can be podcasts. Before, I would have said it would be media as well, but it has changed a lot. So I find at the moment, or well, let me be very candid, when I started in 2015, 2016, it was much easier to get a feature in Forbes or in Business Insider than it is now. So those things, when you see those credibility markers, they're still very true, but it's much more difficult even for PR agencies to get those slots anymore. But it doesn't really matter because people with smaller audiences are still incredibly powerful. One of my favorite ones is podcasts. Another way that I really enjoy working is with brands. Um, and then I also really like small collaborations, you know, promoting other people's summit or being a guest expert on a summit or a symposium like this, for example. There's lots of different ways. It does take a little bit of courage to reach out. But honestly, you do it from a place of service because you want to get new people to see you and to find you. That's the point. You want people to be able to know that you exist if they need you rather than suffering because they haven't found anyone who's right for them yet. All right. So then once we are blossoming, we need to also stay focused. So the next step, and I called it pruning and tending it's kind of basically i did 
I wanted to stay in my garden metaphor for some reason, but it basically means that when you have your clients, you really want to be as efficient as possible and you want to give them a five-star experience. You really want everything to be super smooth and you also want it to be kind of systemized that when you get help, when you are ready to get a team member, a freelancer, everything is set up that it can run smoothly. And also if you want to take time out that everything can still work. So things that you should really lay down specifically in health coach practices are things like onboarding. And onboarding means um, after the second after a person says, you are a godsend. I've always wanted to work with someone like you. I've been looking for this forever. I'm so excited. Then you have kind of a domino effect of things that are happening and that should make it as easy as possible. Please do not make it as easy as possible for people to pay you. We have Stripe, we have PayPal, uh, you have your coach. There's so many different platforms that you can use, of course, to make all of this easy. Sending a contract. And here I know that your coach has amazing, amazing uh, classes on legal advice and expert that they are collaborating with. Sending the contract, super important. And please don't do it in a way that you send a doc file and people have to print it out and then they have to sign it and then they have to scan it or, you know, and send it back. All of these things can be beautifully streamlined. I personally used Dubsado for this, for example, but there's other ones as well. Scheduling appointments, you can, of course, do that the first session and do it manually. But if you have an online scheduling system, it's just so much easier, specifically with time zones. You don't have to go back and forth. And remember, time is a commodity that we really, really want to make. We want to make it count. You want to have one place where you have all your communications and notes Again, I love this Posada for this because every email goes through them and is saved there so I can see my email history immediately. And sometimes specifically with health coaching clients, it's important that you have a written trace of what you said or what was said in general it can be really, really important. And then you also, of course, need a financial system um, where you can keep track of everything for your accountant or your bookkeeper or for both. So there's different way I'll use wave is something that I used for a long time now is it's all included so I use that but it depends on your country and so forth but these are things that make the whole process really really beautiful and smooth and then finally I like bonuses for my clients so that could be remember when I talked about the master classes in the very beginning a beautiful bonus is a recording of those masterclasses that people can watch before your first session so that they can immediately come with targeted questions. It could also be if you find the same questions over and over, why not do a recording that people watch before your first session so that you can, again, save time and get straight into it. it could, of course, also be a physical product. It could be a little online course. It could be meditations. It could be a recipe book, a meal plans, whatever it is. I do find that bonuses are something that make this pruning and tending process a lot more efficient. Now, I'm going to talk before I jump into the Q&A, bonuses, see that absolute perfect segue that I did there. I do have a bonus for you guys as well. So you can get an audio sneak peek of my upcoming book, which is coming out on the 25th of January. So it's going to be a normal book, obviously, but it's also going to be an audio course. So it's a hybrid of the audio book and an audio course. You can get a free sample when you go to christinemeansbusiness.com forward slash course sample, where you'll hear me talking about every different section of the book, the first chapter, six sections. And then you get the opportunity to get the book for free, the first, die, first five days of publication. So you don't have to pay for anything to get the whole thing. When you sign up here, I will inform you. You will also have access to the luxury edition, um, plus some swag and goodies. And also I have a new kit, a new product, which is the ultimate pre-business trip kit for all of those of you who cannot wait to travel again, which is me, by the way. Um, and you get 50% uh, off on Black Friday. So it's an amazing suite of things for 27 bucks on Black Friday. It's 50% off. So make sure that you are on my list to get the code. So you can get that when you go to christinemeansbusiness.com course sample. All right. So a quick recap on what we've seen today. Your phases are seeding, 
making sure everything is being born. Then it's to not let people know that you exist, to have a system in place, to be everywhere, have long-term content and short-term content, blossoming, making sure that you don't fall into the feast and famine cycle of you know either marketing or having clients. Ideally, both should be happening in beautiful synchronicity so that you never have to worry about getting clients. And then finally, tending to those amazing people that know exactly who you are, who you love you exactly for who you are, who are so excited to be working with you because honestly, you should not be settling for anything less. So that is all we have time for today. Um, do you know that, that's a weird way of phrasing it, but we do have an in-depth two-hour workshop for 10 people only on the 27th of January. It's going to be a paid workshop where you will work with me, so 10 of you, where I go into each and every one of your needs. So any of the points that were raised today, we can dive deeply into those. I will ask you in advance what you want to focus on, and it's going to be fantastic so if you want to be one of the 10 people make sure that you reach out to the team of your coach house so that you don't miss the moment when registration for that go online all right so let's have a look at your questions um let's see so i have one here i have a problem with my existing business and i'm thinking about changing this approach entirely what's the best way to communicate to my clients and I would like to create packages. What is the best structure for this? So I've changed my businesses a lot. And one of the first things is that uh, you feel, sometimes we feel a little bit flaky um, because, you know, we're used to, you have to finish what you started. But truth is we all evolve. We evolve all the time. We have new things that we learn. We have new priorities. We have new insights. And my biggest suggestion is always to be very blunt with clients. Again, it's not just about them wasting your time or sucking out your joy because you actually don't really like doing what you do, but it's also saving their time because they will not reach out to you knowing that that is not what you do anymore. And those who are looking for something new that you're now catering for will be absolutely thrilled. So I would say through communication, through your email list in particular, as those are the people who already raised their hand once to talk to you and to get in touch with you, just be blunt and just say, hey, I've just changed like all we do. I've decided not to do this anymore, but instead I'm doing this. Please feel free to unsubscribe it because the message or my news are now going to be focused on this element. No hard feelings. And if you know someone who's struggling with particularly this problem, I'd be happy to talk to them, for example. Don't waste anyone's time. Just be honest about it and be excited because it's beautiful and it's courageous and it gets you closer to living a life that is full of freedom and joy, which we are all endeavoring to do, correct? With the packages, I think we went into that. And don't forget that you have a masterclass on your coach health that is go that is really breaking that down as well. Um, let's see. Does showing up three times a week on Instagram mean three posts? It can be. It doesn't necessarily have to be. I do like to have three posts. The rule of thumb. Okay. First of all, <laughs> full on caveat and truth bomb. Nobody really knows how Instagram works. And I'm not kidding. Like a lot of people have started years ago when things were different. And now since the outage happened, a lot has changed again. And then it's something else that changes the algorithm. So honestly, it's a guessing game most of the time. But the rule of thumb is that you should show up in some shape or form every single day, whether it's a post, a story, a reel, uh, a repost, a repost on a story, that's the rule of thumb. And then you should be engaging with at least five people. And there's tons of strategies. And I have more in my book that go into that. But truth be told, I like to have at least three posts a week when I feel like it. Like I don't, I try to really stick to it, but I do it when I'm motivated. Um, that to me is usually enough. I do find that hashtags can make a big difference, but if I don't feel like posting, because I really, my posts, I know that they're going to be on my grid for longer. So I want the message to be a little bit deeper. If I don't feel like that, I will share something of my day through stories, or I will repost something in my stories, but I do try to stay in my people's minds. Let's put it that way. And then Jessica asked for, oh, Dubsado. Um, Dubsado. 
let me know if you want to get, I think 30% off because I have a discount code for them. Um, uh, I don't have it on hand, but you can email me Christine at christinemeansbusiness.com and I will get, get you that and you get 30% off. Then let me see. Um, oh, and you, you answered that. I just saw that. Um, recommending electronic forms and contracts. Yes. Um, um, oh, perfect. So you're all taken care of. So basically the whole slide of pruning and tending is your team here. So reach out to them. Like if you, especially if you have a questions, I know that they're very, very happy to answer any questions. Um, Oh, yes. Um, builders, Elementor, Thrive Themes, and Divi. D-I-V-I -I is one that a lot of people use. Um, and then, oh, yeah, I would like to change my client prices. So here's the thing. As soon as you feel that you are undercharging, there is a vibe of resentment towards um what you're selling <laughs> so if you it, and it's not yes you will lose clients but i would rather go back to the term of pruning in a way because you're pruning people who yes to some extent they cannot afford you but as you are creating content you have pr have pretty much everything online so you know they can get the information but those who really want to benefit from your expertise and your time collapsing they will be happy you know to to pay for that an option that you can do is as you raise your prices have a very clear system something like profit first by mike mccallowitz is a book that you can read where you can have scholarships available for example or you can have at some point when you have enough people that are ready to work with you create a group program that's more affordable so try to think it that way but do not exchange your time for less money because that is just going to be this vibe of resentment. And the experience that I've had is that people who register that way will also very often be looking for an excuse to stop working with you rather than people who pay higher prices. It's just in general, the consensus with experience that I vouch for too. Um, let me see, Barbara is asking, I'm getting ready to change my niche. Is it a big deal as far as my website? It depends on your niche a little bit. I, it's as big as a deal as you want it to be. Like I want, I really recommend that it's clear. So I don't overthink it a lot of the time. Like I would just change the language. I would announce it um, to, through social media, through your new set list and then just go for it. There doesn't need to be a long kind of transition period. I would be pretty, pretty straightforward with that. All right. And I think that's it. You're very welcome. Okay, so I think that's the questions that we have for now. Don't forget that you can always reach out to the team of Your Coach Health. There's loads and loads of stuff on their blog as well. There's lots of masterclasses. And I would also invite you that you can join everyone at Happy Hour, which is happening now, which I think is just a fab, fab idea. It's 9 p.m., nearly 9 p.m. my time. So you can be absolutely sure on a Friday night that I'm going to... Um, take advantage of that and have my little glass of bubbly and just have a look at the whole your coach platform to find everything that your practice basically needs right so there's different ways that, or that you can set it up and reach out to them like I honestly find that the easiest way is sometimes to reach out and to have someone walk you through it show you where you have everything and then we also have a link here um, for the happy hour just now that you can join so do that get in touch with marina and the team they are very very helpful and will answer all of your questions and now that you know what you have to or what you should be having in your system flow it's easier that you know that you can have everything in one place so have a good look and i hope you have a wonderful friday evening you have a wonderful happy hour and and i think it was an absolutely fantastic summit thank you to the team 
and make sure that you book your onboarding call. There you go. You actually have a link to get everything done, which is awesome. So make sure I'm just going to wait on for one more second so that your people can click on the Calendly link to get an onboarding session with the team where you can get all of these things explained, have someone walk you through it. Don't be afraid. And, um, and again, we're all here for you. All right. Wonderful, everyone. And with that, I'm going to say good night. <laughs>